Hi students, today we are going to do another topic in number theory, quadratic residues and Legendre symbols. Let us first understand what quadratic residues are. If there exists some integer x such that the congruence x squared is congruent to a mod of p is satisfied, we say that a is a quadratic residue modulus p. Provided the GCD of A and P is 1. Now the question is, do all such A qualify to be quadratic residues? Not necessarily. So how do we find that? We use the theorem, given an integer A, it will be a quadratic residue modulus P if and only if A to the power P minus 1 by 2 is congruent to 1 modulus p, where the GCD of A and P is equal to 1. Let's look at some examples, where we will apply this theorem to check whether the given integers are quadratic residues or not. In the first example, we are given the congruence x square is congruent to 4 mod of 7. To find if 4 is a quadratic residue modulus 7, we will apply this theorem. A is 4. So 4 to the power 7 minus 1 by 2. We have taken P to be 7. We can see that the congruence holds. Why? Because the left hand side is 4 to the power 3 which is 64. 64 minus 1 is 63 and that is divisible by 7. So 4 is a quadratic residue mod 7. In the second example, we have a congruence x square is congruent to 3 mod of 7. A is 3, P is 7. If we put these values in this congruence, we see that 3 to the power 3, which is 27, minus 1 gives us 26, and that is not divisible by 7. So, as the congruence does not hold, we know that 3 is not a quadratic residue mod 7. The third example, we are given a to be 3 and our p is 13. Let's see, 3 to the power 13 minus 1 by 2 is 3 to the power 6, which is 729. 729 minus 1 is 728, that is divisible by 13. So, 3 is a quadratic residue mod 13. In the fourth example, we have a to be 49 and modulus is 13. If we substitute a and p in a congruence given in the theorem, we see that 49 to the power 13 minus 1 by 2 is 49 to the power 6, which is congruent to 1 mod 13. Hence, 49 is also a quadratic residue mod 13. Now, in let's go back. Here, in this example, we see our A is a whole square. It is 7 square. In example 1, 4 is also a whole square. So, it comes to our mind that do all whole square become quadratic residues mod P? Not necessarily. In example 5, we see we have x square is congruent to 1 modulus 5. Now 1 is a whole square and here 1 is a quadratic residue because this congruence is satisfied and the GCD of 1 and 5 is 1. So here the whole square 1 did qualify to be a quadratic residue. But let's check the next example. Here x square is congruent to 25 mod of 5. Now, if we have to see whether 25 is a quadratic residue or not, we will see that it is not a quadratic residue. Why? Although it is a whole square, the GCD of 25 and 5 is not 1. It is 5. So, we see that it is not a quadratic residue. Not all whole squares become quadratic residues modulus p. Now let's define 
legender symbols. Both quadratic residues and legender symbols, they play a very important role in solving quadratic congruences. The notation for legender symbol is AP, where A is some integer and P is an odd prime. This we have to remember, P cannot be 2. So how do we define it? Now AP has three values. It will be 1 if A is a quadratic residue mod P. It will be 0 if P divides A. Otherwise, it is minus 1. We will look at this theorem. In this, we are given that P is an odd prime. And A and B are relatively prime to P. In that case, A, P will be equal to B, P if our A and B are congruent to each other modulus P. In the second point, we see that if the numerator is a product of some integers or you can say that if we can factorize it, then here we have taken AB in the numerator. ABP is nothing but A by P, B by P. Now, in the third point of the property, let us take M to be some odd number which is a product of R primes P1, P2, PR. Then, A by M would be naturally A by P1, P2, PR. So, this will give us A by P1, A by P2, dash, 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 A by PR. You have to remember, all the PIs are odd primes. They might not be distinct. Now, in here, another thing which you can notice is that we take M to be any odd prime number. Because if all of them are odd, their product will also be odd. We do not take P to be 2. Hence, this condition is applied. We call this symbol as a Jacobi's symbol. We will do some examples on this theorem later on. Let's look at some formulas on Legendre symbol which helps, they help us in finding the value of the, any given Legendre symbol. So the first one is uh, 1 by P. Now 1 by any odd prime will always be 1. What about then minus 1 by P? Minus 1 by P can be found using minus 1 upon p minus 1 by 2 or we can always use this minus 1 by p will be 1 if p is congruent to 1 modulus 4 and it will be minus 1 if p is congruent to 3 modulus 4. We can use any one of them. The third formula is a square by p. So a square by p will always be 1. Let us say we look at some particular cases. What if a value is 2? Then 2 by p is always equal to minus 1 p square minus 1 by 8. Or we can also use 2 by p is 1 if p is congruent to 1 mod 8. And it is minus 1 if p is congruent to minus 1 mod of 8. Now, as we uh, saw that Legendre symbol will either have 1, 0 or minus 1. 0 we get only if p divides a. So it is enough to find just one congruence. If 2 by p does not satisfy this congruence, naturally its value will be minus 1. We can even avoid checking the second congruence. How about 3 by p? If a value is 3, then a by p or 3 by p will be nothing but 1 if p is congruent to plus minus 1 mod of 12. Otherwise, it is minus 1. But if you want to check this property, we can see if p is congruent to plus minus 5 mod 12, then it is minus 1. We can even use the other property. 
Moving on to the reciprocity law. If you are given two primes P and Q, then P by Q can be reversed. That is, we can write it as Q by P. Now, if both are P and Q, they are congruent to 3 modulus 4, then we can invert, but we get a negative sign. If any one congruence out of the two is not satisfied, that is, P is not congruent to 3 mod 4 or Q is not congruent to 3 mod 4, then we have P by Q is equal to Q by P. We can invert it. So, one thing you can remember, all these properties which we have done here, they are sufficient to find any Legender symbol. Here we have uh, seen that some more properties are given here. Let's say A by 7. So what happens if our A is congruent to 1, 2 or 4 mod of 7? Then A by 7 will be 1. Otherwise it will be minus 1. P by Q into Q by P is nothing but minus 1, P minus 1 by 2, Q minus 1 by 2. Or we can use this property also. If A is 3, then we can reverse this and we can get P by 3 if P is congruent to 1 mod 4 and it is minus P by 3 if P is congruent to 3 mod 4. These are some additional properties which I have given here. We sometimes use them for proving a lot of things. Let's look at some examples. Now, in the first one, we have 1 by 11. It is of the form 1 by P. 1 by P, we saw in the formula, is 1 by P is always 1. So, this value is 1. Come to the second sum. Minus 1 by 5. Now, minus 1 by 5 when we use the formula for minus 1 by p, we get minus 1 to the power p minus 1 by 2, p was 5, it gives us 1. Look at this, 5 square by 7. This is of the form a square by 7, which is 1. 2 by 3. Now, if we use the formula for 2 by p, it gives us minus 1 to the power p square minus 1 by 8, which will always be minus 1. 3 by 13. For this, we use our congruence 3 by P. So, we can see that our P was 13. So, 13 is congruent to 1 mod of 12. So, its value is 1. Let's look at minus 2 by 11. Now, for such Legendre symbols, We'll write it, we'll write the numerator as minus 1 into 2 and then that becomes minus 1 upon 11, 2 by 11. Minus 1 by 11 when we apply the formula is minus 1 to the power 11 minus 1 by 2. And for 2 by 11, we use the formula minus 1 to the power p square minus 1 by 8. Both of them are minus 1, hence their product is 1. How about 6 by 5? So, here we have used the property, second property of our theorem. A, B by P is nothing but A by P, B by P. So, in our question, we were given 6 by 5. 6 can be factorized. 6 is 2 into 3 upon 5. So, this will be 2 by 5, 3 by 5. And we apply the formula for 2 by 5 and 3 by 5. We see that both of them are minus 1. So, the product is 1. How about 7 by 5? In this, we see that denominator is a prime number. And numerator is larger than the denominator. So, you can always replace the numerator by its residue mod of 5. So, we can see that residue of 7 mod 5 is 2 
So this becomes 2 by 5. When we apply the formula, we get minus 1. How about 11 by 15? Here we are going to use Jacobi's formula. What does Jacobi's formula tell us? If our denominator can be factorized. So here 15 is a product of 3 and 5. So 11 by 15 is 11 by 3 into 5. Which we write as 11 by 3, 11 by 5. 11 by 3, 11 by 5. And again 11 is larger than 3. Numerator is bigger than the denominator. We can always replace the numerator by its residue mod 3. Here it becomes 2. If you replace 11 by residue mod 5, that is 1. When we apply the individual formulas for 2 by 3 and 1 by 5, we get the value as minus 1. You can see 1 by p. 1 by 5 will always be 1. So I did not write it here. This gives us minus 1. Then, so you see that here we use the Jacobi's formula. Let's look at this congruence. 15 is congruent to 1 mod of 7. We can see that because the congruence holds. So 15 by 7 and 1 by 7, they both will be equal. That is, these two Legendre symbols are equal. This is what we saw the property 1 in our theorem. If A and B are congruent, then A by P and B by P will be equal. Let's look at this question. 37 by 47. Now, we see that both 37 and 47, they are prime numbers. So, we can use a reciprocity law and bring the bigger integer to the numerator. And then we can replace it by its residue mod of denominator. So, but we can use it. We have to see whether our P and Q, they satisfy the congruences which were given. Let's go back to a reciprocity law. P by Q will be equal to minus Q by P if both these congruences hold. P is congruent to 3 mod 4 and Q is congruent to 3 mod 4. Otherwise, it is 1. So, let's see. Now, this is P and this is Q. As 37 is not congruent to 3 mod 4, one of the negation is enough for us to just invert it as it is without the minus sign. So, because 37 was not congruent to 3 mod 4, we can write 37 upon 47 is 47 by 37. Now, replace 47 by its residue mod 37. So, you can see residue is 10. 10 can be factorized as 2 into 5. So, what does this congruence become? It is 2 by 37 into 5 by 37. We have 37 as a prime number in the denominator. Here, we can directly apply the formula and that gives us minus 1. This is of the form 2 by p. And here, we can use reciprocity law and write it as 37 by 5. Because 37 is not congruent to 3 mod uh, 4, we have taken the uh, reverse of 5 by 37 without the negative sign. And now we replace 37 by its residue mod 5, which is 2 by 5, which is again minus 1. So the answer is 1. Let's look at this question. For what value of p, a minus 3 by p becomes 1? Now, we'll write the Legendre symbol minus 3 by p as minus 1 by p into 3 by p. We have uh, written minus 3 as minus 1 into 3. Now, we apply the formula for minus 1 by p, we get this. And 3 by p, we take it as it is. You saw in one of the formulas, p by q into q by p is nothing but minus 1 to the power p minus 1 by 2, q minus 1 by 2. If we take q to be 3 in this formula, we will get p by 3, p by 3, 
and 3 by p. And when we substitute q is equal to 3, we get this whole thing is 1. So our right hand side is minus 1 to the power p minus 1 by 2. Let's substitute this minus 1 p minus 1 by 2 is equal to p by 3, 3 by p in our equation 1. So which gives us minus 3 by p is minus 3 by p is now in this place we are writing it as p by 3, 3 by p. So p by 3, 3 by p into 3 by p. It is this 3 by p which we have here. So this gives us p by 3 and because if we are taking a square of 3 by p, it is bound to be 1. So 3 by p whole square will be 1. If both of, for different values of p, we will get either 3 by p as 1 or we will get 3 by p as minus 1, but the square will always give us 1. So this gives us minus 3 by p is p by 3. As 3 is in the denominator, so p will either be congruent to 1 or 2 mod of 3. p is 1 plus 3k or p is 2 plus 3k. But it cannot be 2 plus 3k because that might become an even integer but p has to be an odd prime. So we take p is equal to 1 plus 3k which is an odd prime. Every prime of the form 1 plus 3k is also of the form 1 plus c, 6k. So the answer here is for all p which satisfy p is congruent to 1 mod of 6, our value of the Legendre symbol minus 3 by p will be equal to 1. Thank you for watching.